Uh, this is our Bible study for the Will Clayton Church of Christ, uh, Humble, Texas. This is February 2nd, 2020. And our topic this morning that we will be dealing with is uh, somewhat along the lines of what our message was, but a little different. It is a discussion of emotions surrounding the death of a loved one. A discussion on emotions surrounding the death of of a loved one. Now we're going to use a text as Genesis 50. We're going to use that. And we're going to show how these people they were rallying around Joseph uh, after they actually had lived so many years with Jacob. Remember this is a foreign nation to them. And so Genesis 50 and 1 says And Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him and kissed him. And Joseph commanded his servants, the physicians, to embalm his father. And the physicians embalmed Israel, which is another name for Jacob. And forty days were fulfilled for him. So are fulfilled the days of those which are embalmed. And the Egyptians mourned for him three score and ten days. And when the days of his mourning were past, Joseph... Spake unto the house of Pharaoh, saying, If now I have far grace in your eyes, speak, I pray you in the ears of Pharaoh, saying, My father made me swear, saying, Lo, I die, and my grave which I have dig for me in the land of Canaan, thou shalt thou bury me. Now, therefore, let me go up, I pray thee, and bury my father, and I will come again. And Pharaoh said, Go up, and bury thy father, according as he had made thee swear. And Joseph went up to bury his father, and with him went up all the servants of Pharaoh, the elders of his house, and the elders of the land of Egypt. And all the house of Joseph and his brethren, and his father's house, only their little ones, and their flocks, and their herds, left they in the land of Goshen. And went up with him both chariots and horsemen, and it was a very great company. And they came to the threshing floor of Atah, which is beyond John, and there they mourned with a great and very sore lamentation. And he made a mourning for his father seven days. And when the inhabitants of the land, the Canaanites, saw the mourning in the floor of a time, they said, This is a grievous mourning the, to the Egyptians. Wherefore the name of it was called Abel Mizraim, which is beyond Jordan. And his sons did unto him according as he had commanded them. For his sons carried him into the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave of the field of Machpelah Machpelah, forgive me, and which Abraham bought with the field for a possession of a burying place of Ephraim the Hittite before Mamre. And Joseph returned to Egypt, he and his brethren, and all that went up with him to bury his father after they buried his father. Now, we see a lot of emotions here. Listed in Genesis 51 to 14. This is a great man. Joseph is second in command to all of Egypt. But he's a Hebrew. The Egyptians are a different race of people. They serve a different God. The Canaanites are a different race of people. Intermingled in there. And they serve a different God, so to speak. And so now, you have... Three things we can point out that we see mourning throughout this whole area. A noticeable mourning. And we have to understand is that emotions, they are determined by the individual that is going through the trial and tribulation. They determine and they have a right to look at Genesis 2. And verse 3. Remember, this is a discussion of emotions surrounding the death of a loved one. Genesis 2 and 3. Uh, and we see here. Uh, oh, hang on. I don't want that one. Uh, let's see. I want not Genesis 2 and 3. I want to get uh, Hebrews. Oh, hang on, hang on. Forgive me, forgive me. I want us to go to uh, Genesis 23 and 2. Forgive me. 
the 23rd chapter of Genesis, verse number 2. Got my own numbers transposed. Genesis 23 and 2. And Sarah died in Kerjatharba. And the same is Hebron. And the land of Cana. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Now when we see a period of mourning. It is that they just come and look at the Bible. Okay, it's time to cry. Ha ha. A sa ha. Sorrow. No, it means, you know, I'm coming for the purpose of sorrow. So, you know, when I see my wife, there's going to be some sorrow here. And I'm going to run my mind to and fro. Events of our life that we had together. I'm going to also think about. Some stuff I thought we was going to do the next day, which never going to happen. So I'm going to mourn. And so the same thing happens to Joseph when he has a mourning period. Now we're going to go back to Genesis 50. And then we're going to look at some of the emotions that Joseph displayed. One in verse 1. Joseph fell upon his father's face and wept upon him. I kissed him. Sometimes people have seen this, and I've heard it said over the time, which is discouraging to me. Uh, I've heard people say, people that fall all over caskets and kissing the body, and you can't pull them off. That's the people that, you know, they had some unfinished business with that person. That's, that's a lie. It may be true some minutes, but we can't say that about everybody. It's sorrow. They're sad. They weep. They kiss the person. Some of us say, well, you know, that person is in the bottom of Okay. That's all they got left is that. Some people don't do that. Some people look at the body and just look at it. They view it. And they have their thoughts. You can't judge either person either way. You shouldn't judge yourself either way. You should not beat yourself up for either emotion. You do not have to make yourself feel sad about any situation concerning the loss of a loved one. At the same time, you cannot make yourself feel discouraged if you're having a little bit more time overcoming the loss of a loved one. Uh, when it says he had a period of mourning, that did not say Joe didn't cry no more. I want to address that. Because you have people say like, the Jews had a period of mourning 30 days. After that, it was done. That, that is not what the text says. Nobody cares about what some Jews did. The Jews are not the standard for life and salvation. They don't even walk by God's grace anymore unless they have become a Christian. So, you know, you see a lot of stuff in the Bible that Jews did. It does not mean that that is the way that God said, okay, it must, out of 30 days, you guys need to shut it down. That, that's not it. And so the idea is that God will come and tell us in certain instances, you've wept enough. God does that. By our being relieved from us. He came and told Saul, you've cried enough. I mean, he told, not Saul, forgive me, he told Samuel, you cried enough for Saul. Get up, you've been crying all night, get up and go get me another king. Okay, but that wasn't the death of Saul. That was Saul's soul being lost. And God casting him away. Saying, you know, hey, I said, well, he sh you should really be saying, well, you know, God said, okay, that's enough. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's it. Go get another king. It's time for us to move forward. Now that, so God has that ability to interact with us. And when we see people not being able to function anymore in life, they don't want to eat. And you know, okay, now it's affecting the health. They don't want to get out the bed. Okay, now it's affecting the mental state. They don't want to go to work anymore. They just get up and lay and look at the sky. Okay, now you have to have a concern when you see that avenue. You can't go to them, you know. So this is what the Lord told Saul. Okay, this is a death. It's different. And you can't just go to them. I mean, you tighten it up. You about to lose everything. No. You have to find out why they feel they can't move forward. You have to ask them. You may have to sit there a minute till they tell you. You know. And the idea is that's what you have to do. You have to meet them where they're at. If you're not equipped to handle that, 
get someone who is. Don't get involved. Just make sure they have the Spirit of God, full of the Holy Spirit, and that they're living upright. Why is that? Because that's who's going to help people. You know, because they may say, man, let's go get a drink at the club. Now, you don't need to send them. See, that's different. Even if they're in the church, don't send them. You know, you may know, you might say, well, I want to send someone, so go talk to him until I get off, but he might tell him, go get a drink and take him to the club. You know, don't send him. You just have to be real. You have to know who you're dealing with, you know. And so what happens here is, he talks about that as an embalming period. The Egyptians were known for being the masters of embalming. Hey, our bodies today has still exist. It's like the skin is tightened up, the bones, the organs are still protected. They just were the mass, and that, that art is lost. Still, some people sent off to Egypt to get certain ointments and stuff they use for embalming. But they were the masses, so they knew, okay, the body's got to be here with the, with the things inside of it a certain number of days. Once they were fulfilled, then they said, okay, the Egyptians, the Egyptians, the key, the Egyptians mourn for him three score and ten days. That's 70 days, y'all. That's 70 days. Now, we have to understand that he's been embalmed like the Egyptians do. And they've been crying for 70 days. Three score, the, the word, forgive me, hold on, hold on, let me get 24 to 60 is a score, three score and 10. That's, that's a long time. Morning, okay? So, you got people that will look at you funny if you're not back to work in, in a week. You guys don't look at you funny. Bob, man, we need him we need him to take care of this area, man. Man, it's been a whole month, man. When my mama died, I was back at work the next month. That's you. That's you. You should have been back to work next month. If you got a problem with that, you should have came back the next morning. That's still your fault. You have to know how to deal with your emotions. And you have to know I'm I'm not I'm not ready to handle it, you know? You have to make that determination. You'll tell people surrounding you, I'm not ready to handle it right now. And people that have wisdom will know how to deal with that emotion. They can't, it's not the military. We don't kill folks and jump into a jeep to the next area. This, soldiers have difficulty coming back from war because that's not normal to kill folks and jump in a jeep and eat a sandwich. Man, that's not normal. So they got to be deprogrammed when they come back because society doesn't, society doesn't let you move like that. Because somebody might die that you're working with and one of your co-workers just, they're out for a month and you got to, you tell me, I wish Bob would come back. Man, I remember the time, man, I saw my friend here get blowed up. Man, we drove three miles and started eating. Yeah, and that's why you need a deprogram when you came out too. You have to understand that because this is a thing that you can see every day. And when it's time for you to deal with it, it's different. Some people can embalm their loved ones. Morticians, they will invite you. I don't want nobody to touch dad but me. I got it. Some people be like, man, I need to call my friend. I'm not going to make it handle this. Difference. Are they weak? No. He's just saying, I'm not going to be able to handle it. Yes. Okay. I, I don't need to look at her. Okay. You know, uh, I was just sitting here as you were uh, speaking. I was thinking about how that's why we as Christians have to be have compassion and empathy mm -hmm. and be sensitive to the individuals. It made me think of this is actually true in the congregation there was a brother, his mother passed. Mm -hmm. He loved his mother. He was an only child. Mm -hmm. She passed. Well, this brother that had been pretty strong showing himself to be pretty well, faithfully coming, let me tell you like mm -hmm. When his mother passed, it just devastated him. Mm -hmm. he, loved, he said his mother was such a good woman. And this right. Man. And he started dropping off in attendance. Wow. Uh -huh. And then it came to a point where he just wasn't coming. So the brethren there was reaching out to him. Praise God. But I'm saying in dealing in a situation like this, this was a brother that had been faithfully coming. Mm -hmm. He was uh, uh, still, you know, in the beginning stages. But when his mother passed, he thought, and I was thinking, I, I was just thinking about my thoughts that I had on that at the time. I, mm -hmm. I thought, Mothers have been passed. Mm -hmm. Fathers have been passed. 
But see, you're bringing a new perspective to it. Exactly. Uh -huh, because it, it was taking him longer. Yes. But yet what was happening was he was actually falling away from the church. Amen. Because he wasn't going into the hospital where he could help, you know, get help for his soul. There, exactly. To understand what he was going through. Very well said, sister. God bless you for that. Because that's where we have to understand, like she used the word, the hospital. Go to the hospital when your body is sick. Physically, you go to the spiritual hospital when your soul is sick. Because God, the surgeon, the great physician, his son is there cutting and getting sorrow out. God knows how to cut sorrow out and take it from you like a man can cut out cancer. God knows how to fill your heart with joy again. But he's not going to do that if you're not going to come to the gathering. And that's why, as she said, that's what the brother's supposed to do. Go and get retrieved. Take like the doctor and make a house call. And make a house call. And go to you. Bringing you the type of medicine you need. That will help you come back. The blessing of our house calls is. You can't bring the hospital to somebody. We can bring the whole hospital to you. Because we got the word of God. All the medicine is in the book. So we have to understand that. And that's why we got to make a house call sometimes. Sometimes people get insensitive. Think about this, man, I buried my wife, two of my sons, and my cousin within three years. I don't understand this. Well, then you, 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 you need to go to the hospital. Something wrong with you. You sit and don't need to. You're there at the hospital, but you're not taking the medicine. You're not letting them take your temperature. You know, all kind of things wrong with you. You want every time a doctor comes in the room, you run out. So you go in the church not getting in to see, but we can't, we can't have it like that. No, Brother Kevin. Thank you, Sister. Okay, thank you. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, when I was when I was a kid growing up, uh, I I didn't really like going to funerals when I was younger. Um, when I was when I was little, uh, I'm not sure if, if most of you may have heard of this, but I was told that you know when you see a dead body in the casket, not to touch it, you not to touch it, the face or any part of the body. But I was told that it, it brings bad luck when you do that. Mm, mm, mm. And so, um, you know, but I was a kid at the time, so I didn't understand, you know, all of that information mm -hmm. as far as death, you know. So I was fearful of seeing dead bodies in a casket. Mm -hmm. You know, they had to, you know, basically try to drag me to go up there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so for me as a kid... The reality didn't set in, so I was fearful of, of seeing dead bodies because I thought that they would come out of the casket and grab me or something like that. So I had that kind of fear. Amen. But as I got older and became wiser and knowledgeable uh, about death as being a, a, a reality, it's a part of life, then I understood it more clearly as I got older. And so when my father and mother passed away, it didn't really affect me. Uh, like it did when I was a kid mm -hmm. because I I come to the knowledge of understanding that it is real and that it's going to happen to all of us in here and so as I understood it and it came, became more clear to me it, it became less effective on me uh, when I lost both my parents so but I was just grateful to see the outpour of saints that gave me the support and the strength and that actually helped me to deal with it a lot better because I understood it. But, you know, it just to show that some people process death a little bit differently than others. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes, um, sometimes, you know, sometimes they, they may get certain attitudes you know, towards other people as as though it's like they're blaming them, you know, for why they got sick and died and stuff like yes. that. But 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 it is un it has to be understood that, you know, God is still sitting on the throne. He's still in control. He controls everything that goes on. You know, and so that part we don't have no control over uh when a person dies because that's that's within our control. But what we can control within ourselves is to be prepared uh, for that appointed day. 
you know, when death will come, you know, we have to be prepared. And so if we die in the Lord, you know, there's hope because there's an afterlife after, you know, we depart this body that, Amen. you know, Jesus has the power to resurrect, you know, the righteous mm -hmm. will meet the Lord in the air, as the scriptures, you know, clearly says. And so there's hope, you know, and so Jesus, you know, he goes to prepare a better body, you know, that is incorruptible. It's an incorruptible body. Okay. So it's, it's a body that, you know, that we'll, we'll live forever with him and we'll be alive, you know, just just like we're fellowshipping right now, you know, it, it, that's how it would be, you know, in, in God's kingdom, you know, and we'll see all those who have fought, you know, before us, you know, the apostles, all those who have died and lived perfectly before God, you know, we'll, we'll be able to uh, experience uh, that blessed hope along those, you know, who are already in the place of comfort until Christ comes again. Amen. Well said. And you know what's beautiful about this is that one thing we have to learn, that's why we're talking about emotions. People have to recognize some people, especially the children, they deal with things differently. So a lot of people do that if a person's parent dies, a loved one, they say, well, let's go see them. The child pulls back, let them alone. So how, how would you determine those down? Because they just told you, my emotions, I'm fine, but I don't want to see that. The reason you want to respect that is because what you force them to do is really care for now. It may cause some difficulty to adjust. Everybody doesn't adjust from things they saw as children. So you have adults also. Sometimes a person may say, well, let's go look. Do you know that there are people that say, I don't want to see them like that, so I don't want the casket open. Mm -hmm. And then you got all these other relatives. Hold your thoughts, Sister Green. You got all these other relatives that are now getting in your business. You say, okay, well, look, okay, i tell you what. Y'all see it. And I'm going to wait, and then I'll come in. When I come in, I want to close it. Well, I haven't seen, don't see. So you need to face it. I faced it. The person is telling you, I don't want to see them stiff like that because they're, they're not in there. Now, now you, you got to go, gotcha. You know how many people don't do that? You will break their heart. Do you know, as much as I love everybody I'm going to feel that way in my family, if anybody in my family said, I don't want to see him like that, then I'm telling you now, okay, amen. Because what will that do for me? Yeah. They don't want to see somebody say, well, they may regret later. Regret what? Hmm. They made the decision, and just like when people make decisions, to go and see someone. If it looks just like them and look at the sleep, they're saying, I don't want to see them because I know they're not asleep. They've left. And this isn't what we're talking about there because that's our emotion interfering with this person. And this becomes traumatic in families that have more than one sibling. Susie doesn't want to see dad. Y'all three go and be quiet. See, somebody got to step up. Sometimes it's somebody, that's what Brother Fritz talking about, somebody got to step up. That is like Ezekiel and say, leave Susan alone. You go and when you're through, we're going to close it and that's it. And we're going to stop talking about it now. See, now you, you get to cry later, but not now. Because yeah. you got to hold it together because yeah. somebody getting out alive. If there isn't someone in a family like that, things get real chaotic. People don't want to go eat after the funeral, you know. Why, why is Aunt Susan? She thought, I don't want to even see y'all ever. It'd be 10 years before you see her because you should have left her alone. She said, I don't want to see them like that. It isn't that we have unfinished business. It isn't that I can't face it. That I want the memory of their vibrant, smiling face, and I want nothing else. I told them, bye at the hospital, and I'm done. And they said, well, we kissed Grandma. And everybody was asking, okay, I'm not going to kiss grandma's remains and that's it and that's it people lose it sometimes when a loved one dies 
And they start making up unwritten rules of what should be done. And that's what has to stop because it makes it, it makes it bad. And then when holiday come out, they don't even want to be nowhere near the family. All they remember is they grab my arm and push my head toward this coffin. I'm very upset. So I want to say thank you, Terry, for sharing that with us. Sister Carl. I, I just wanted to say very good points brought up. I just wanted to add to that too. When we understand that we have to be long suffering with one another yes. and, you know, respect one another's wishes because a person can still be strong and say, I would like to remember them the way I remember them. Yes. Because there are some uh, loved ones that have gone on where cancer could have ravished the body and yes. knowing that they were suffering toward the end. And they may say, I don't want to see. I want to remember them as I remember them. I don't want to see them in this stage. But yet still know as 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter uh, at verse 54 says so when this corruptible shall put on incorruption and this mortal shall put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory mm -hmm. and what I'm saying is that Christian can know that they're no longer suffering anymore they're in Abraham's bosom and they're happy, but they just choose to not want to see them physically how they may be uh, you know viewed at that time and it says here at 15 and 55 oh death where is thy sting oh grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ yes. therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord mm -hmm. for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord and all I'm simply saying, physically, they may have already said their goodbyes yes. to the person. Yes. And they may choose to not want to. But spiritually, they are just as strong knowing that this person, that, you know, even if they weren't in the Lord, to know that I love them and did the best that I could. And I, and I gave them the truth and they're gone on now. Yes. I choose not to want to see. Mm -hmm. So be careful when you're judging. That's why the Bible says when you judge, yes. judge righteously. Mm -hmm. But ultimate judgment belongs to the God Amen. and I was just thinking about that you can be Very strong good. and still not say I, 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 I choose I would not to like to see you know yes. uh, the remains now and still be strong and unmovable in the Lord. Amen sister well said I want to say something and then you know uh, what we'll do is uh, we will uh, get ready to wrap up this has been very wonderful uh, what we're talking about the emotions? What do you do now when, as Kevin pointed out, hope, Sister Carl pointed out, hope? What do you do when you look at the book of Ephesians and you see that there is a group that when they die, they have no hope and they are without God? And then they die. Now this is the Bible telling us. That they have. No hope. And. They are. Without. God. What. Do you do when you lose someone in your life. Like that. Anybody can. Mention what. Do you say. To you. I want to read verse 12 of Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2 12, and we'll wrap up here. That at the time you were, and I said these Gentiles remember that. Without Christ. So that there's some Gentiles like you and I. But remember, we used to be just like this group that still exists. And the reason we got baptized is we didn't have Christ. Now we we know they don't have Christ. Now see, we know they don't have Christ. Because that's why we left. Let's see. So Paul's talking about Gentiles and Jews in this analogy that do not have Christ. See, the key is, is that Paul now knows the Jews are like this. At one time, the Jews had promised, but once Christianity came, it was over. He says, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, one time the Jew had the commonwealth of Israel, but it's gone now when he writes this. That's why you see him use a word like we when he's right. He's not a Gentile, but he uses we because he knows 
We Jews are like this. And we Jews are like that now who are not Christians. And strangers from the covenants of promise. So he said, but you Gentiles have never been in this group. Having no hope. And without God in the world. So, you lose a loved one like that. You can't use Kevin and Sister Carl's scriptures at all. Because they left. And there are some people that will let you know, I'd rather die than get baptized because that will say mama didn't make it. I know a guy that told me that his preacher told them. If you listen to Steve, that's what he said. He didn't even know me, but he told me I was. You listen to Steve and you get baptized. That's what he told me. He told me what his preacher told him. He said, you'd be saying your mother died lost. And you know, I'm looking at this grown man, much more profitable than me. I'm looking at him, we're talking. And I say, well, your baptism is not going to affect your mother. It's going to affect you. He said, but I told him Steve's a nice guy. He said, I don't understand it. And he had a relative that had a problem with me, too. And he says, my relative thinks that you're kind of weird. I said, <laughs> I'm not saying nothing wrong to them or nothing. You know, I just I, I, I go to a different congregation than, than they believe. Then the relative I've been to the Church of Christ before. But I, never, I had a personal conversation with them about the kingdom of God later. But and he told me, he said, uh, you could baptize me in my pool, couldn't you? I said, right now. And you'd be safe. But I see you walk out. Because he gonna say his mama lost if he gets baptized. Okay. So, if you're a member of the church and one of those people, your relative, and they die, what emotions you think might be running through somebody's head? See, an emotion might enter someone's heart that says, when they hear the message of the gospel, now, nah. man, I don't believe that. I know my, I know my grandma, I know my grandma died saved. If it, wasn't from, if it wasn't from my grandma, my mother was a drug addict. And my daddy wasn't nothing but a thief, died in jail. If it wasn't for my grandma, they had me in a home that the children were being touched improperly. And my grandmama told me we read the Bible every day. I, I, I don't care what they preachers say, man. I'll never be back here. I know my grandmama not in hell. But see, the preacher didn't say to grandmama in hell. The preacher said... If you're not a member of the church, there's no hope for you. You are without God in the world, and you die. So what am I to do? What advice can we give as we wrap up to the person who is in the church of Christ, but their loved one dies, and it is obvious that they came from that group to be saved. What, what are they? What emotions do we forewarn them of? Okay, if I'm understanding what you're saying, first of all, God created us beings of choice. Yes. We can choose to do, we can choose to obey or we can choose not to obey. Yes. And when we have done our part, which we as Christians, we're not saved to just be saved to ourselves. We are saved that we may help save others. But we can't lose ourselves because going to heaven is real personal. Yes. But when you have taken and shared and you have showed love and you have sat down and you've shown them the scripture and as opportunity presented itself, sharing, shared with them the truth the truth about the one church and they still refuse because Reverend so and so said this or my mama died in this or I've been in this here I, I was born a Baptist died I'm gonna die a Baptist there's no that. more that you can do yes. but ours is too lovingly we to do it in love yes. but it is up to them to obey yes. God said every knee is gonna bow and give an account of what they did in this life yes. so I do what I'm commanded to do, and they either obey or they disobey, but they'll be in the hands of a God yes. that cannot lie. Amen. And 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 we know they died lost. Yes. And wrath will, you know, come. But Amen. Because God has already decreed it. But understanding we are beings of choice. 
And this person, you know, like we'll say, it's been said, some people say, this was a good person. Well, you know, the, the Bible says the steps of a good man mm -hmm. are ordered by the Lord and oh, he delighteth in them. Yeah. There are people that are morally good, yes. but but we can love them. Yes. We are to love them anyway. The Bible says love your enemies yes. that despitefully misuse you. Yes. But we can only give them the truth. It yes. is up to them to accept. Amen. And if they reject it, you just, the Bible says what? Uh, in, Requoting the scripture, you just uh, shake the dust off your feet yes. and you just continue to share the good news. Amen. Because everybody's not going to be very receptive to mm -hmm. the truth. Well said. I want to leave y'all this. Thank you, Sister Gwen. I want to leave y'all with this thought. When you go and you're comforting people who they are not believers, intermingle with believers, and the person who died has denounced that. I need to do any of that stuff you all are saying. Then you still got to meet them where they're at. You will hear a lot of things said while you're comforting them. You're sitting there eating, you hear a lot of statements made. I know, I know her. She probably up there with Jesus right now, sitting down, ready for Bible study. You just eat your chicken. Take a drink of your soda or tea or water, coffee. Statements, you know, that are divert, that are sent toward you. Uh, so and so, what do you think about what the preacher said? You know, when he said, you know, there's only one church. You know, they may be testing you. It is only one church, one type. That was Galatia, but it's the same type as Corinth. This one. Eat your chicken and drink your coffee and whatever you drink it. Because you're still a comforting force down a pillar. But if you start to adjust statements to bring comfort as Sister Cause for a war, you've just endangered your soul. Because you will not find Jesus doing it. You won't find any of the disciples that love. They just would not do it because they knew this is too important to me to lose now. And that's what Jesus means when he said, You love father, mother. Brother, sister, wife, brother, more than me. See, because, you know, the pattern is what you place yourself in. And there's only one pattern in me. Jesus said, I'm the way, not the ways. He said, I'm the truth, not the truths. To the lives. All single. Way, truth, and life. And he brought some information that made a whole nation that was so many you couldn't count because they were like sand to sea and told them all, oh, all oh, y'all lost. Unless you come to me. And I will lead you to my father. The one who you say is your God. Do you know how powerful that was? That reminded them of everybody that died. They knew some people died. So they've been preaching. They said, I never believe that. Why well, won't listen to Jesus now? They killed him. Yeah, they should have killed him. He's a nice guy, but he, he lied on God. That's how people thought. You've got to understand that, that that mentality is not left. So in your comforting as emotions fly in death, you must remember as we close out here, you have much you can say to them. You have much you can say about the person. They were a good person. Boy, they could cook. They were so sweet. They helped me. Many days. I remember one day I was short of money. They gave me $50. All those are facts. But when you step into the realm of salvation... Don't get into that arena because there's a lion in there and it's not the one of Judah. It's Satan and he will eat you alive because that's he would love nothing more for you to step in there thinking you're a gladiator. But your sword has become physical and no longer spiritual. And he can see, oh, they got him. Oh, they got my sword. I got him now. And it will alter your disposition and you will take a new position with the Lord from that day forward because you made that statement. You know what you calculated when you left? I got away with it. I got a blessing. That's down my job. I started saying stuff different. And I've been here in the church. And my life blossomed. You're on the wrong path. And death, you don't realize, it shook you so. Instead of weeping like Jesus and saying, take me to him so I can lift you up. You said, take me to him so I can put all you all in the grave. And that's bad. So we have to understand, you have to be prepared 
for the emotional roller coaster that happens at death. Because if you don't watch it, you'll be on the ride too. And before you know it, you'll be up and down and turn around. Before you know it, you'll fall out the roller coaster and fall to your death. That's just an announcement. We have to recognize that. So God bless you all. This particular time we'll dismiss. If we can uh, get, Brother Carr, can you give us a prayer? Please get us home safe.